okay, okay. We back to a Black Men Sketch episode seven. This is Mayo Garner. I'm Brian. And I'm Royce. We have a very special guest, intern and CEO, Michael Belton. Welcome. Welcome, welcome. welcome. Hey, welcome, hey. Man. How's it doing? How you doing, brother? I'm doing good. Okay, okay. So I just want to start off and ask anybody, how y'all doing tonight, man? I just want to know how everybody feeling before we get this session started. Uh, how you doing, Brian? I'm good, man. Just, you know, staying with it, staying out, out the way, handling business. Okay, okay. How about you, Royce? Yeah, I'm feeling pretty good, you know, dedicated, focused, getting ready for the week, you know, strong Monday. What about the new CEO? I feel terrible, man. I'm just going to say it straight up. I feel terrible. What's going on? I've been on? working all day, man. <laughs> No, I'm kidding. I'm good. I'm good. Hey, that I'm sounds like good here. results. Like <laughs> what you was doing all day, if you don't mind? Uh, meeting. Meeting after meeting. Mm. I get a few minutes in between meetings to try to figure out what's going to happen in the next meeting. But, yeah, it's been it's been a lot. Man, hey, who are you telling for? You Jama, <laughs> here you are, man. You okay. you in you Jama now, man. How, how How's that feeling, man? I feel good. I mean, I've been busy. I've been exhausted every night when I go home from mm. from work, but it's a good kind of busy. It's a good kind of exhaustion because I feel like this is what I'm supposed to do. This is where I'm supposed to be right now. Like when you mean you say you're supposed to be here, why why you feel that way? Like you feel like it was a calling that you're supposed to be here and help, you know what I'm saying, help mm-hmm. this situation? That's a great question. Um as I, as I said in the first staff meeting that I had, um, all staff meeting um, a week ago yesterday, uh, I'm a mission-driven person. I believe that uh, I was put here for a reason. And my one of my early goals in life was to figure out that reason. Mm. And at the time, I thought um, I was put here to help young people, you know, to have a voice and to have some resources so that if they were having issues and problems, um, they could turn their lives around, work through those issues, and become responsible, interdependent um, adults. And then uh, as I continued to work on that mission, it it came to me that part of my mission uh, is to be more focused and intentional about working with um, people of African descent. As a young man, I thought I, I had this idea, this notion, this feeling that um, I was put here for a reason and that um, part of my work was to figure out what that reason is. Mm-hmm. And uh, so I, at first I thought my mission was to work with young people, not just young men, but young people particularly young people who didn't have a voice, who didn't have the kind of resources that other people have to move into adulthood without a whole bunch of hurdles in front of them. So can you break down the resources? Like what resources will will you give him back? What was your idea? Well, my idea was, you know, at the time I was working in Hennepin County at the Hennepin County Home School. I was a cottage director there. And um, my work really involved helping kids sort of get the kind of psycho-emotional, behavioral kind of um, resources that would allow them to move into adulthood without moving into having to make a stop in the Greystone Mansion, which is that place up there in St. Cloud. Uh, called the reformatory or making stops in Stillwater Reformatory, I mean, prison or Oak Park Heights. That's what I was thinking about at the time. As I grew in my profession, as I grew in my awareness, I started thinking about focusing my energies on providing services and whatever I could uh, for African Americans and particularly African American young people. So that's kind of what drove me to do this work. This is part of, and I feel like I'm, that this is my mission to do this stuff. And I've retired about three or four times. Mm. Uh, what made and, you keep coming back? Because I realized that you can retire from a job, but you don't retire from your mission. Mm, facts. 
Got a question for you here. Um, you know, you got some pretty big shoes that you're filling. Uh, Mr. Z, Otis Zanders was head of our program for quite quite a long time. And um, he built some deep bonds with some of the brothers. But my question is for you, um, when you look at the a cur- curriculum and the direction of the program, how do you feel Ujama is coming in as a new member? And are there any tweaks or changes that you may be interested in making to the program? This is, uh, I'm in day two, or about the, about the end day two of my second week. And I promised myself and just about anybody else that would listen that I'm going to be listening, that I don't have enough information uh, to say definitively what kind of changes need to happen or I think needs to happen here. Uh, particularly to the program. There are a bunch of things that I think are little tweaks. That And, and when I say little, I don't mean unimportant. I just mean things that um, can be done re- rather easily, at least for me, they would be re- rather easy. And I think for the rest of the staff would be done. But they're not the program kinds of things and more mm-hmm. policies and how do we – how do we move from point A to point B in terms of um, policies and structure around doing that? But beyond that, but in terms of the the program, I from what I understand of the program, I think is brilliant. Um, and I just wish that more men and people were that this was available to more people. Mm-hmm. So how you think you could bring that about? Well, I'm not sure. I'm I'm, I'm being honest, I'm not sure. I have some ideas, but I'm just not sure if this is just me just messing around in, my, in the junk room knowing is my mind or if it's actually a valid idea. And that's a great answer, and we appreciate that. Uh, Honesty. Um, another question that I have for you. Uh, in your bio, it says you did a lot of work with youth and um, mental health issues. Uh, you spent a long time raising awareness and providing resources to help the young brothers. And um, my question is, coming from working with the youth, how do you plan on transitioning to working with adult brothers? And do you plan on in- incorporating some of that mental health awareness into the Ujama program? Well, one of the jobs that I was given are things that are list of tasks Mm -hmm. um, that I was given by the board, the board of directors that um, hired me, was to uh, fill in some of the gaps in coaches and staff. And one of the things, um, the priority things for me is to um, hire somebody who can attend to address their attentions to uh, mental health Mm. uh, for the, for the men here, the young men, the young men here. Um, I think the earlier part of your question was about making a transition from dealing with youth to uh, young men. And unfortunately, um, for a lot of young men who struggle as young men, the issues that um, emerged when they were young didn't get resolved when mm-hmm. they were young, and they carry it right. with them when they're, when they're older. Mm-hmm. And... Um, I just believe in this this whole act, axiom, and it sounds like you know, kind of stupid, but it's like wherever you go, there you are. Mm. <laughs> and just because you've gotten older doesn't mean you're wiser. Um, so I know there's some things about me at my age that really point to the fact that I'm really only 15 years old um, because there, there are issues that I hold on to that – you know, were present when I was 15 that maybe I should have shed. Like, I, I love the game. I'm not a super okay. gamer, but I love the game. All right, all right. We got something in common. That's <laughs> fine. <laughs> you know? <laughs> and so there are just times when I'm like a 15-year-old, right? And and then there are times when I get irritable and don't want to do my chores. <laughs> <laughs> like I'm 13 or 14. So wherever we are. You know, wherever we go, there we are. And if things don't get resolved when we're young, we carry them into adulthood. 
So that's the main thing. So what is the best thing for us to re-resolve that? Like, if the young men was in this room, what was your first advice? What would you give them? What would you say to them? I don't think I would say anything initially. I would ask, what do you need? Mm. What's going on with you? You know, how do you feel right now? I know, how do you really feel? And I would ask the questions I think are essential that anybody who is thinking about being an adult needs to be asked. And that is, who are you? Why are you here? And what's the critical difference that your presence makes to this world? Mm. What advice would you give your younger self today from your standpoint? The big advice that I would give is, uh, one, give up being so stupid. Two, believe in yourself. Believe in yourself no matter what. Uh, Three, be kind to others. Kindness is not only an art and it's not only a behavior, but it's a gift. Four, listen to those inner voices more often than you do. And five, be grateful. And six, parents and grandparents and friends are a finite quantity. Treasure them because they're not going to always be there. It's deep, man. I like to, I especially like the last three. Um, I had a question for you before it uh, slips my mind. When, when you were saying, you know, you're you're a gamer and you like to ask people how they're really feeling, I was thinking uh, when it comes to my relationship with my child, I often, you know, when I have something I want to talk about, I get his attention by first spending time with him. You know, we, we go for a walk or we hop on the game. We play for about 20, 30 minutes. Then I ask, I, I creep into asking him how he's doing, what he's really doing. And um, with the COVID and all the stuff going on the past couple of years, um, Ujamaa as a whole, we've been going on less outings. You know, there used to be fishing trips. We used to show up at events, volunteer throughout the community. We used to load up the van and go make sandwiches down at the Dorothy Day, you know what I mean, mm-hmm. for the homeless people. And we've gotten away from that. Now that I'm bringing it to your attention, would that be something that you're interested in working on bringing back to the program? Love the ideas. It's just a matter of how and when. But love the ideas. I love the spirit of that. It's a little difficult for me right now because I can barely leave my office. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) So, but yeah, I get it. And I think those are valuable experiences. And... uh, and wonderful connections. And during those, you know, we had the, the four-night camping trip. We were out in the woods, you know, for four or five days. Um, Coach Rudy was actually the one that took us. But by day two, three, and four, you know, he found out a lot about us, you know, mm-hmm. because we were out in the woods with nothing but each other. Yeah. And so, like, you know, when you do things like that, people unintentionally, you know, the guard comes down, yeah. you know. It's a lot easier to talk about something when you're exhausted, <laughs> yeah, yeah. you know. Truly, but um, truly. just something I wanted to throw out there. No, great suggestion. Thank you. And um, I see you're, you're like you're like considered our elders, and we're considered like the bridge between the youth and the elders. So, what advice or what what message would you want us to give to the younger crowd than us? Well, I I think the most important message that you could give to the young people is to be um, successful yourselves. Hmm. People watch behavior more and pay closer attention to behavior than they do words. Words are the hook, right? But the behavior is what brings people back over and over and over again, and it's what makes the deepest impact. Hmm. So basically Uh, you're saying lead with example. Exactly. Exactly. Powerful, powerful. I like to believe with that too, you know, saying actually speak louder than words. So we live in a place where bad things happen to black men. Thinking about George Floyd and Philando Castillo, what can you say to Ujama men that gives us hope? Let me take a minute and pause and think about that for a few. My thoughts are this, um, or these, I should say. Um, I've been around for a long time and I've seen lots um, of times of uncertainty of when black folks was had had enough 
but I've never seen the combination of a George Floyd situation in the midst or at the beginning of a pandemic, a, a major lockdown, where our normal um, lines of connection and communication and comfort and family were disrupted in such a critical way. And, and community to community, so much of that was, I mean, we couldn't even go to funerals. Mm-hmm. I had a brother who died, and we couldn't even go to the hospital until he died, about to die, and then they let us in. I mean, it was just been, it's not just me. I mean, so many of us, particularly us black folks, suffered in ways unimaginable. And then to have George Floyd and, you know, and then to remember back all the traumas. Um, So having said all of that, hope is important. And kind of how I put my hope, where I put my hope, is the knowledge that things will change. And I just remember the things that the old folks, they were probably younger than I am right now, but back when you're... 5, 10, 15, anybody over 25 was old, right? But I remember when the old folks used to say, mm, and this too, whatever is happening today that's awful is not necessarily going to be there tomorrow. It's not necessarily going to be there next year. And so part of my hope is just understanding that my job is to hang on and not give up and just allow myself to disintegrate because of something that somebody else is doing or something that somebody else has done. I don't care what it is. And then the other thing is, is I have a lot of faith in us, Mm -hmm. faith in us. Fortunately for me, Junior's mom was super pregnant at the time. So I was in the house. I got everybody in the house and just got my son brought over to me and we just, had like a lock in, nobody left. We- it was my birthday. He died on my birthday, on May 25th. So, and me and my brother, my, my bougie, all of us, Richard, we were just all in the crib, just angry, man. You know, and then, you know, I, and I mean, angry, you know, there's a rage, you know what I'm saying? You know, I was seeing young cats just run up to white folks, just knocking them out, you know? I ain't gonna so lie, say I had a second thought, but I didn't. You know what I'm saying? Because I remember Ujama. You know what I'm saying? I remember Ujama got me this far in this position. You know what I'm saying? And and if I take off, then Ujama gets a bad name. You know what I'm saying? Because then they're going to be looking like, oh, Ujama, you did all this, but you got these kids acting. You know what I'm saying? We can't fall. You know what I'm saying? Ujama can't fall. And it showed me the farther you go, you, you got to learn to control your composure. As far as you go, people, 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 really, people praying on your downfall, man. People just trying to mess with you mentally, so you can't let that break you. You know what I'm saying? You got to remember home and always remember home. And that's why I appreciate you, John, because in that moment, man, it was, it was a man, it was a tough year. Yeah, worked hard, we came far. Now we can't fold. Facts. Thanks for sharing. No problem. So, how long you been doing this again? I started working professionally in 1971. So how old was you at that time? I was 21. You started young. I did. I was young and stupid, Mm. (laughs) but I got lucky. So so when you say young and stupid, how long did it take you to correct your mistakes? I didn't start getting a clue till I was about 27. Mm. And that was me. I'm a slow learner. But once I get the lesson, I I, I move pretty I move pretty well. But so, I wasn't into my I wasn't into uh, my early thirties before I shed most of the stupidity. I mean, all of the stupidity, not all of it, but most of it. Okay, some some young brothers my age, including myself, or around my age, we think of um, policemen in jail as modern day slavery, and. My question to you is, have you had any run-ins with the police? And if you have, can you remember one that really stands out to you? Yes, of course, I've had run-ins with the police. Uh, Fortunately, that phase of my life I put behind me Mm. um, several years ago, several decades ago. The last run-in I had with the police 
a, f- a friend of mine and I were headed into a pizza shop in South Minneapolis, and two police rolled up on us and uh, told us to assume the position. Um, I was scared because I was high, and my partner had a couple, a couple of roaches in his pocket, and so um, I was I was concerned with what might what might happen. Uh, so I didn't say anything. I let my partner, who you know I've always been big, my partner's smaller smaller brother, and so I and much more. It just had a much calmer presence mm. than I did. And I, I decided he needs to do the talking. And he said, well, uh, sirs, uh, why are you stopping us? What is there a problem here? And he did it in a way that didn't, you know, get them. Because he could tell and I could tell. They were like, okay, let's, 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 let's see if we can get this into another, ramp this up to another level. But he asked him in such a way, and he wasn't polite, but he was, um, I don't know how to explain my friend. He's still my friend. But he did it in a way that appealed to their reason. Mm. And they said, well, there was a couple of guys uh, who were seen um, who robbed somebody, and it was a, a mile away. And my friend said, oh, okay, well, that wasn't us. Mm. Is there anything else? And they said, no, okay, you can go on and do what you're doing. And that was the end of it. And after that encounter, we talked about it, and I made a pledge to myself that from that day forward, I was going to be three or four steps ahead of myself to cut off any possibility, any kind of drama with the police. So I always have fully fully insured. I always have my license tabs up to play. I always renew my driver's license on time, ahead of time, you know. All, I make sure that my cars ain't raggedy and fall, <laughs> falling apart, you know. I do all of these things not to draw attention to myself. So from from the from the from the police. So that's that's been my strategy. I'm not like going to say it's for everybody, but um, that's been my strategy. It should be because I, like I had to learn my lesson. If, uh, responsibility is a foundation of safety. You know, there's a lot of problems that people don't admit this. That there's a lot of problems that we come across that we face by where we could just do the right thing in the first place. There, there would be no driving without insurance or driving without a license if you don't get behind the, don't get behind the wheel. You know, and like you're saying, you make sure all your ducks are in a row before you enter a situation and right. you do better off. I mean, I don't know how else to put that, but. I just want to say this real quick. I'm not perfect. I do make mistakes, okay? I'm not 100% uh, follow my own. I do it enough, but I'm just going to tell you, I do make <laughs> mistakes. I don't want you to feel like, oh, okay, this old dude is perfect, got it down pat, because I don't. I have it mostly down pat, but not completely 100%. So I just wanted you to know that. Aye, aye. Wow, aye, 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 man. Did we having a good day. This is Ujama Place, man. Hey, man, I just want to say, how was that interview? What y'all brothers think about that interview? I really liked the interview. The man was open. You know, he was he was here. He was present. Oh. Every question he had a, at yeah, least he, yeah, like fifteen seconds at least. You know, he was really engaged and he was like welcoming. So you know, dealing with CEOs, I usually get intimidated with meeting them, but I'm definitely comfortable with him. And I'm mm. planning to get to know him more. How do you feel about it, man? I kind of feel like the brother was sharp, man. You know what I'm saying? I love how he was talking about. He's there for the youth. Um, we we read his background. He was, in, you know, what I'm saying a probation officer in JDC. Well, actually, what what he, what the brother say again, Brian? He was overseeing all of the youth places. So JDC told him town. Yeah, he, he was, was doing collected all of them at once, and they'll come to him. You know what I'm saying? So to sit back and see this brother do something for the youth, and, you know, we young adults in here. So this is definitely a perfect fit for this brother. I think he was a perfect fit. I think this brother, in and all, he's just an intern for right now. I think he's a perfect fit for yeah, right yeah. now. The I'm, brother's I'm, really about the people. Yeah. Unlike some of the questions you guys uh, had asked him, um, they were kind of deep with, with his answers, like how he talked about 
wanting to come in and just sit back and observe and listen and not just start moving stuff around and making decisions. Um, Some of the experiences that he shared, just his genuine drive to want to help people. Like the man said, he retired three Three times times, and he couldn't. And came back. And and had to come back because his work wasn't done. So that's some drive and some motivation that we can use in our program. And I'm looking forward to see what Mr. Belton brings. Yeah, I definitely, I definitely like him. You know, he's he's, he's definitely somebody that that you could be uh, comfortable with. Like a lot of people is, you know, that I don't know. You know, they give that to the high expectation. Like you got to come correct when you come to me. It's like, no, nah, nice. he just said he's not a hundred percent right. Yo. You know, but he's willing to try and work with forward. you. You know, Straight I like honest. that. I really like that. Honorable man, I like to call him. Yes, this is Mayor Garner from Ujama Place. You can catch the Black Men Sketch on every platform. Check us in. You can never miss us One. out. If you're a young man in the Twin Cities area and you're looking for help and resources, uh, housing, education, employment, um, parental guidance and help, resources, child support, or you just need a spot to kick it and chill and get around some brothers and get something off your chest, um, you can hit us up. UjamaPlace.org is our website, or feel free to give us a call, 651-528-8006. We will give you the address when we talk to you on the phone. Uh, We are here for you. We love you. We are Ujamaa.